615 time now for business news and we say a very good morning to Mike Eppel this Tuesday morning to get the latest on business. Good morning, Mike. Hello. Good morning, Tammy. How are you doing this morning? I am good. I am good. Um, did you did you did you get a nap yesterday? I remember I, you were I talking sure did. to Frankie about that. Yeah. Uh, so what the, I did with was the heat and the humidity and the rain. Yeah, it was perfect. I napped for I think three hours. Three oh, wow. hours. And that's I not still, a nap. I still went to bed like at a good re reasonable time. Yeah. It's not a I'm nap. A, You're only supposed to like nap for like twenty minutes. I'm a sleeper. No, twenty wow. minutes. That's nonsense. I, then why bother? Oh, why bother? Yeah, but I always. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get too far into the. Yeah, the weeds here, I but I, I sleep for that long, and then I wake up and I'm like, "What day is it?" <laughs> oh no, I feel amazing. I can like okay. I can run a marathon. Okay. Love it. Good for you. Yeah, good for you. Love it. Uh, nice. Going to business news now. We have Petro Canada yeah. <laughs> could be up for sale. This is crazy. Yes. Fifteen hundred stations, right? Yeah. Well, look, we've seen um, a couple of uh, gas station or or, or energy majors, energy uh, companies sell their ref, uh, retail operations, specifically the gas stations. Uh, this is kind of a reversal of a trend that we saw in the early 2000s when actually Suncor bought Petro Canada back then for about $15 billion, picked up uh, the refining operations and the retail brand of Petro Can, which you mm -hmm. could argue is one of the best known uh, brands in the country. Well, now they're looking at uh, maybe selling those uh, gas stations because a shareholder out of the U.S. wants Suncor to uh, do what's called unlocking shareholder value. They think that uh, Suncor is, is worth a lot more if you break it apart uh, and separate the retail and the refining businesses. So who would buy Petro Canada if it were put up for sale and what would be the, the price tag? Well, analysts are figuring that uh, Petro Can, just the, the gas stations, would be worth about $9 billion dollars. And you'd have a company like uh, Alimentation Couchard out of Quebec, operator of Circle K convenience stores. What's the big money maker for uh, Petro Canada? It's the retail, those little shops, because the margins on the stuff they sell are quite high. The gasoline margins, of course, fluctuate day to day. So, yeah, it could be a, a, a shakeup here as to who owns Petro Canada and a pretty big move for Suncor if, in fact, it happens. They're still contemplating the idea yeah that's pretty big yeah price price of gum in a gas station Skyrim. yeah exactly yeah, it's big um, <laughs> they're, they're making some good money on that yeah uh recession fears of course mm -hmm. uh, have a lot of people worried but apple is actually taking some steps that may be uh freaking some people out when it comes to this yeah and, and we're looking at apple as a bellwether for silicon valley and the tech world because uh what bloomberg was reporting monday is that apple's looking at slowing down its hiring slowing down its spending going into 2023 and they're just seeing the global economy and this is something that a lot of other you know, some of the banks in the U.S. have talked about, too, uh, the economy slowing down uh, later this year and into next year because interest rates are going up uh, dramatically here in the very short term. So this is going to hit consumer spending. Got to spend a lot to buy Apple products, and they're kind of uh, bracing for this. So um, Apple, actually, in Monday's trade, was up early. Stock looked good. And then this report came out. By the end of the day, Apple was down a couple of percent. The Dow was down over 200 points. So it was really reflective of the power of Apple on the market, not just from a, an economic guidance standpoint, but from a, a stock standpoint and uh, just kind of uh, looking at consumer trends going into, dare we say, next year. Yeah. And we're out of time, unfortunately, Mike, but oh, quickly, we know that delisting homes. I went on about homes. naps too much. No, I know, right? But uh... <laughs> yeah, no. anyway, look, look, this is, this is a, is big. Yeah, the, the idea of people taking uh, a home off the market because right now we've seen interest rates and mortgage rates adjust dramatically. Yeah. So uh, John Pisalis of uh, Realosophy talking about the idea of people maybe relisting at a lower price or just waiting to see where the market goes over the next few months and how high mortgage rates climb mm -hmm. and kind of a, a stagnant uh, real estate market here in the midst of the summertime. Yeah, okay. We'll have to see uh, how it goes in the fall. All right, thank you so much, Mike. Appreciate it. We'll see you thank tomorrow. You.